ಭೌಮಜ್ಞಾನತಿಮರನ್ನಸ್ಯಾಜ್ಞಾನಂಜನಾಶಲಾಖಾ ಚಕ್ಷುರುನ್ಮಿಲಿಥೇನ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀಗುರುವೇ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಎವ್ರಿಬಡಿ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಫಾರ್ ಜಾಯ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಅಸ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂಯಿಂಗ್ ಪರ್ಫಾರ್ಮೆನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಲಿಸನಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕಥಾ I first offer my respectful obeisances thousands of times to the lotus feet of my divine spiritual master his divine grace AC Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada and to all the previous acharyas I have my respectful obeisances to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Sri Sri Radha Madan Mohan Sri Sri Radha Gopinath and Sri Sri Radha Govinda and to all the devotees who are on this call today Hari Krishna ನಮಸ್ತೀಷ್ಟ ಪ್ರಸೀದ ರಾಧ ಪ್ರಣಯ ಪ್ರಚಾರ ಆರಧಾನಷ್ಟಂ ದಾಂತರ ಇದಂ ಜಾಚೆ ಪುನ ಪುನ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ರೂಪ ಪದಂ ಭೋಜ ಧೂಲಿ ಸ್ಯಂ ಜನ್ಮ ಜನ್ಮನಿ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗರಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀ ಬಾಸಾದಿ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಗೌರ್ ಪ್ರೇಮ ನಂದೇ ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಬೋಹರ್ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂ ಆರ್ ರೀಡಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಚಾರಿತ ಬಟ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ವಿ ಡೂ ಐಮ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ರೀಡ್ ಯು ಅಜನ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಿ ಶರಣಾಗತಿ ಆಫ್ ಶ್ರೀಲ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವಿನೋದ್ ಠಾಕೂರ್ in which he describes what it's like to chant hari krishna in the perfectional stage there are several stages in the development of chanting hari krishna the first stage is the offensive stage probably described the second stage as the stage of clearing as one's getting freed from the offenses and working very hard to overcome the 10 offenses while chanting and then there's chanting in perfection this is a description bhaktivinu <clears> taku <throat> what power does the name of krishna possess my heart constantly burns in the fire of worldly desires just like a desert scorched by the rays of the sun the holy name entering the core of my heart through the holes of my ears showers unparalleled nectar upon my soul the holy name speaks from within my heart moves onto the tip of my tongue and constantly dances on it in the form of transcendental sound <clears throat> my throat becomes choked up my body shivers again and again and my feet cannot remain still rivers of tears flow from my eyes perspiration completely soaks my body all my skin thrills with rapture my hairs stand on end and my complexion turns pale and discolored my mind grows faint i begin to experience devastation and my entire body is shattered in a flood of ecstatic emotions while causing such an ecstatic disturbance the holy name showers liquid nectar on my heart and drowns me in the ocean of divine love of godhead He does not allow me to understand anything for he has made me truly mad by having stolen away my mind and all my resources such is the behavior of him in whom i have taken shelter i am not capable of describing all this the holy name of krishna is independent and thus acts on his own sweet will in whatever way he becomes happy that is also my way of happiness The holy name is the bud of the flower of divine love and it is the very abode of astonishing mellows such as the power he manifests 
that when his holy name starts to blossom a little further, it then reveals his own divine form and qualities. Thus my heart is abducted and taken directly to Krishna. Blossoming fully, the flower of the holy name takes me to Vraja and reveals to me his own love dalliance. This name gives to me my own eternal spiritual body, keeps me right by Krishna's side, and completely destroys everything related to this mortal frame of mine. The name of Krishna is a transcendental touchstone, a mine of all condition. The, the name of Krishna is a transcendental touchstone, a mine of all devotional mellows. It is eternally liberated in the embodiment of pure rasa. When all impediments to the pure chanting of the holy name are taken away and destroyed, then my happiness will know, will know its true awakening. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur Ki Jai. We're taking up at the <coughs> Madhya Leela of the Chaitanya Charitamrita, where we left off last night in the Beda Kirtan pastimes. And here we are at uh, <coughs> text number 177 in the 11th chapter of the Madhya Leela. Kashi Misha then told Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, everything belongs to you. What is the use of your begging? By your own will, you can take whatever you like. My Lord, we are your two servants and are here just to carry out your orders. By your mercy, please tell us to do whatever you want. Saying this, Kashi Misha and the temple inspector took their leave, and Gopinath and Vaninath went to them, went with them. Saying this, Kashi Mishra and the temple inspector took their leave, and Gopinath and Vaninath went with them. Gopinath was then shown all the residential places, and Vaninath was given large quantities of food, Mahaprasadam, left by Lord Jagannath. Thus, Vaninath Roy. They returned with large quantities of Lord Jagannath's food remnants, including cakes and other good edibles. Cakes and other good eatables. Gopinath Acharya also returned after cleansing all the residential quarters. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then addressed all the Vaishnavas and requested that they listen to him. He said, now you can go to your respective residential quarters. Go to the sea and bathe and look at the top of the temple. After so doing, please come back here and take your lunch. After offering obeisances to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, all the devotees departed for their residences and Gopinath Acharya showed them their respective quarters. After this, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to meet Haridas Thakur and he saw him engaged in chanting the Hare Krishna mantra with ecstatic love. Haridas chanted, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. As soon as Haridas Thakur saw Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he immediately fell down like a stick to offer him obeisances. To offer him obeisances. And Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu raised him up and embraced him. Then both the Lord and his servant began to cry in ecstatic love. Indeed, the Lord was transformed by the qualities of his servant, and the servant was transformed by the qualities of his master. Purport. The Mayavadi philosophers say that the living entity and the Supreme Lord are non-different, and therefore they, equ they equate the transformation of the living entity with the transformation of the Lord. In other words, Mayavadis say that if the living entity is pleased, the Lord is also pleased. And if the living entity is displeased, the Lord is also displeased. By juggling words in this way, Mayavadis try to prove that there is no difference between the living entity and the Lord. This, however, is not a fact. In this verse, Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami explains, Prabhu Gune, Bhritya Vikal, Prabhu Bhritya Gune. The Lord and the living entity are not equal, for the Lord is always the master, and the living entity is always the servant. 
Transformation takes place due to transcendental qualities. And it is thus said that the servant of the Lord is the heart of the Lord. And the Lord is the heart of the servant. This is also explained by Lord Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita 4.11. Yeyata mam prapadyante tamstataiva bhajamyaham mamavartmanuvartante manusha partasarvashaha. As all surrender unto me, I reward them accordingly. Everyone follows my path in all respects, O son of Pratap. The Lord is always eager to congratulate the servant because of the servant's transcendental qualities. The servant pleasingly renders service unto the Lord, and the Lord also very pleasingly reciprocates, rendering even more ser service unto the servant. Text 188. Haridas Thakur said, My dear Lord, please do not touch me, for I am most fallen and untouchable and am the lowest among men. Prabhu kahe, toma sparashi, pavitra hoite, tomar pavitra dharma nahika amate. The Lord said, I wish to touch you just to be purified, for your purified activities do not exist in me. Purport, this is an example of the reciprocation of feelings between master and servant. The servant thinks that he is most impure and that the master should not touch him. And the master thinks that because he has become impure by associating with so many impure living entities, he should touch a pure devotee like Haridas Thakur just to purify himself. Actually, both the servant and the master are already purified because neither of them is in touch with the impurities of material existence. They are already equal in quality because both of them are the purest. There is a difference in quantity, however, because the master is unlimited and the servant is limited. Consequently, the servant always remains subordinate to the master, and this relationship is eternal and undisturbed. As soon as the servant feels like becoming the master, he falls into maya. Thus, it is by misuse of free will that one falls under the influence of maya. The Mayavadi philosophers try to explain the equality of master and servant in terms of quantity, but they fail to explain why, if the master and servant are equal, the servant falls victim to Maya. They try to explain that when the servant, the living entity, is out of the clutches of Maya, he immediately becomes the so-called master again. Such an explanation is never satisfactory, being unlimited, the master cannot become a victim of Maya, for in such a case, his, unlimitedness, his unlimitedness would be crippled or limited. Thus, the Mayavad explanation is not correct. The fact is that the master is always master and unlimited, and the servant, being limited, is sometimes curtailed by the influence of Maya. Maya is also the master's energy and is also unlimited. Therefore, the limited servant or limited living entity is forced to remain under the master or the master's potency, maya. Being freed from maya's influence, one can again become a pure servant and equally qualitatively to the Lord. The relationship between master and servant continues due to their being unlimited and limited. Respect, respectively. Text 190. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu exalted Haridas Thakur, stating, At every moment you take your bath in all the holy places of pilgrimage, and at every moment you perform great sacrifices, austerity, and charity. You are constantly studying the four Vedas, and you are far better than any Brahmana or sannyasi. Text 192. Aho bhattasra pachato gadiyan yajivagre vartate nama tubhyam tapus tapas te juhuvu sarsna arya ramana chur nama grananti yete. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then recited the following verse 
My dear Lord, one who always keeps your holy name on his tongue becomes greater than an initiated brahmana. Although he may be born in a family of dog eaters and therefore by material calculation may be the lowest among men, he is still glorious. This is the wonderful effect of chanting the holy name of the Lord. It is therefore concluded that one who chants the holy name of the Lord should be understood to have performed all kinds of austerities and great sacrifices mentioned in the Vedas. He has already taken his bath in all the holy places of pilgrimage. He has studied all the Vedas, and he is actually an Aryan. Purport. <clears throat> the word Aryan means advanced. Unless one is spiritually advanced, he cannot be called an Aryan. And this is the difference between Aryan and non-Aryan. Non-Aryans are those who are not spiritually advanced. By following the Vedic culture, by performing great sacrifices, and by becoming a strict follower of the Vedic instructions, one may become a Brahmana, a Sannyasi, or an Aryan. It is not possible to become a Brahmana, Sannyasi, or Aryan without being properly qualified. Bhagavata Dharma never allows one to become a cheap Brahmana, Sannyasi, or Aryan. The, the qualities and qualifications described herein are quoted from Srimad Bhagavatam 3.33.7 and were spoken by Devahuti, the mother of Kapiladev, when she understood the influence of devotional service, Bhakti Yoga. In this way, Devahuti praised the devotee, pointing out his greatness in all respects. Saying this, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took Haridas Thakur within the flower garland, and there in a secluded place, he showed him his residence. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu requested Haridas Thakur, remain here and chant the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. I shall personally come here to meet you daily. Remain here peacefully and look at the chakra on the top of the temple and offer obeisances. As far as your prasadam is concerned, I shall arrange to have that sent here. Purport. Since he was born in a Muslim family, Srila Haridas Thakur could not enter the temple of Jagannath due to temple restrictions. Nonetheless, he was recognized by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as Namacharya Haridas Thakur. Haridas Thakur, however, considered himself unfit to enter the Jagannath temple. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu could have personally taken Haridas Thakur into the Jagannath temple if he, if he wished, but the Lord did not like to disturb a popular custom. Consequently, the Lord asked his servant simply to look at the Vishnu wheel on top of the temple and offer obeisances, namaskar. This means that if one is not allowed to enter the temple, or if he thinks himself unfit to enter the temple, he can look at the wheel from outside the temple, and that is as good as seeing the deity within. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu promised to come daily to see Srila Haridas Thakur, and this indicates that Srila Haridas Thakur was so advanced in spiritual life that although considered unfit to enter the temple, he was being personally visited by the Lord every day. Nor was there any need for his going outside his residence to collect food. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu assured Haridas Thakur that the remnants of his food would be sent there. As the Lord states in Bhagavad Gita, yoga kshemam baham yaham, I arrange all life's necessities for my devotees. A reference is made here for those who are very anxious to imitate the behavior of Thakur Haridas in an unnatural way. One must receive the order of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu or his representative before adopting such a way of life. The duty of a pure devotee or a servant of the Lord is to carry out the order of the Lord. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asked Nityananda Prabhu to go to Bengal and preach. And he asked the Goswamis, Rupa and Sanatan, to go to Vrindavan and excavate the lost places of pilgrimage. In this case, the Lord asked Haridas Thakur to remain there at Jagannath Puri and constantly chant the holy names of the Lord. Thus, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave different persons different orders, and consequently, one should not try to imitate the behavior of Haridas Thakur 
without being ordered by Sri Chaitanya Mahababu or his representative. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur condemns such imitations in this way. Dushtamana, tumi kishera Vaishnava, pratushtar and hare, nir janera ghare, tava hari nam kevala kaitava. My dear mind, you are trying to imitate Haridas Thakur and chant the Hare Krishna mantra in a secluded place. But you are not, but you are not worth being called a Vaishnav because what you want is cheap popularity and not the actual qualifications of Haridas Thakur. If you try to imitate him, you will fall down, for your neophyte position will cause you to think of women and money. Thus you will fall into the clutches of Maya, and your so-called chanting in a secluded place will bring about your downfall. When Nityananda Prabhu, Jagannanda Prabhu, Damodar Prabhu, and Mukunda Prabhu met Haridas Thakur, they all became very pleased. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu returned to his residence after taking a bath in the sea, all the devotees headed by Advaita Prabhu went to bathe in the sea. After bathing in the sea, Advaita Prabhu and all the other devotees returned. And upon their return, they saw the top of the Jagannath temple. They then went to the residence of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to take their luncheon. One after another, Sri Chaitanya, Mahaprabhu made, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu made all the devotees sit in their proper places. He then began to distribute prasadam with his own transcendental hand. All the devotees were served prasadam on plantain leaves, and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu distributed on each leaf a quantity suitable for two or three men to eat, for his hand could not distribute less than that. All the devotees kept their hands raised over the prasadam distributed to them, for they did not want to eat without seeing the Lord eat first. Surup Damodar Goswami then informed Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, unless you sit and take prasadam, no one will, no one will accept it. Gopinathacharya, has invited all the sannyasis who remain with you to come and take prasadam. Gopinathacharya has already come, bringing sufficient remnants of food to distribute to all the sannyasis. And sannyasis like Paramananda Puri and Brahmananda Parati are waiting for you. You may sit down and accept the luncheon with Nityananda Prabhu, and I shall distribute the prasadam to all the devotees. After this, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu carefully delivered some prasadam into the hands of Govinda to be given to Haridas Thakur. Then Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally sat down to accept lunch with the other sannyasis, and Gopinath Acharya began to distribute the prasadam with great pleasure. Then Swarup Damodar Goswami, Damodar Pandit, and Jagadananda all began to distribute prasadam to the devotees with great pleasure. They ate all kinds of cakes and sweet rice, filling themselves up to their throats, and at intervals they vibrated the holy name of the Lord in great jubilation. Purport. It is the practice of Vaishnavas while taking prasadam to chant the holy name of Lord Hari at intervals and also sing various songs such as Sharira Vidya Jal. I'll read that again because it's quite interesting. This uh, the, These prayers are written by Bhakti Vinod Thakur. They're sung by Vaishnavas. It is the practice of Vaishnavas while taking prasadam to chant the holy name of Lord Hari at intervals and also sing various songs such as Sharira Vidya Jal. Those who are honoring prasadam, accepting the remnants of food offered to the deity, must always remember that prasadam is not ordinary food. Prasadam is transcendental. We are therefore reminded, Mahaprasadi Govinde Nama Brahmani Vaishnave, Svalpam Punya Patam Rajan Vishwasu Naivajayate. Translation, those who are not pious cannot understand the value of Mahaprasadam or the holy name of the Lord. Both prasadam and the Lord's name are on the Brahman platform or spiritual platform. 
one should never consider prasadam to be like ordinary hotel cooking, nor should one touch any kind of food not offered to the deity. Every Vaishnav strictly follows this principle and does not accept any food that is not prasadam. One should take prasadam with great faith and should chant the holy name of the Lord and worship the deity in the temple, always remembering that the deity, Mahaprasadam, and the holy name do not belong to the mundane platform. By worshiping the deity, eating prasadam, and chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, one can always remain on the spiritual platform. Rama Bhuya Yakalpate. Nice. Very nice. Now, Bhaktivinoda Thakur writes uh, several songs in his Sharanagati about taking prasadam. We mostly know Sharira Vijayajal, Jodendriya Tahikal, and so forth. But he has several more. And along with each one, he's indicated that some of them are to be sung by the Vaishnavas before prasadam, some during. Some are especially meant for taking kitri, some are especially meant for taking sweets and so forth. So the honoring prasadam, as exhibited by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his associates, is a, a transcendental activity. And Prabhupada took prasadam silently. He didn't talk. And he just had one person serving him out, but he didn't uh, engage in a lot of conversation. It was a very psalm affair when he was taking prasadam, meditating on honoring the prasadam whenever he took it. Furthermore, in, in many Gaudiya institutions, uh, the senior devotees will serve the prasadam because it's considered to be a sacrament and it's being distributed, should be done by uh, those who are very advanced in devotional service. So prasadam is on the same transcendental platform as the holy name. And therefore, um, taking prasadam and chanting the holy name of the Lord and hearing the uh, transcendental pastimes of the Lord, the leelas, and the instructions from Bhagavad Gita and the leelas from Bhagavatam and so forth, is a transcendental package through which one can become completely purified in this lifetime and go back to Godhead. When I first got interested in spiritual life, I read many books, as Prabhupada would call austere books, that recommended fasting and so forth. So I was fasting and doing many austere programs. And when I met the devotees and they told me, no, no, feasting, <laughs> I couldn't believe my good fortune. And uh, it all made sense that the food offered to the Lord would become transcendentalized. So how fortunate we are to have prasadam and also what a secret weapon we have that just by the mass distribution of prasadam, we can touch the hearts of others. They can become spiritually advanced just by taking prasadam. Now we'll take a few reflections, Shraddha. So if you want to give everyone... Anyone who wants to uh, make a comment on the um, Zoom, uh, you can do so now by unmuting yourself and speaking up. And if you're on Facebook by any chance and you want to make a comment, you can do that and um, we'll see what you got to say. Thank you. So I have given the privileges to everybody that if they have a question, they can unmute question or reflection. Yeah, um, Mukharanda Prabhu has his thumbs up. So is that supposed to mean that he goes first or? <laughs> <laughs> I go to the runner. Okay. So uh, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, um, when you were talking about Haridas Thakur, I was wondering, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is known to be very particular about the, about the sannyas order, not to offend the, you know, uh, anything that relates to sannyas order. He will not go near women. He will not uh, go near, even he, re he refused Tatabhrutra because he was a king. But then when it comes to Haridas Thakur, he seems to be openly expressing so much love and affection for a Muslim. Um, is there not a, a very strong bias in the general populace towards Muslims and the fact that they don't let them enter the, they're not considered as clean or as high? So with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu showing this wonderful love for um, Haridas Thakur, how is that an exception when considering the other cases? Well, because there's, an eternal principle in the material world. The, the root cause of, of bondage in the material world is attraction between male and female. And therefore, 
Chaitanya Mahaprabhu honored that institution. It's especially important for sannyasi because he's stepping away from the the uh, <clears throat> status quo of the material world, which is marked by Pumsastriya. However, as we know, uh, anyone who becomes engaged in Krishna consciousness becomes transcendentalized. Mami parta vipashrita yepi su papayonaya Krishna says near the end of the ninth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita that whomever takes to the process of Krishna consciousness becomes transcendentalized. And Bhagavatam, we already quoted yesterday, the day before, Kirata Huranda Pulinda Pulkasha Bhira Shumba Yavana Kasaraya Yine Chapapa Yadapashra Yashraya Shudyanti Tasmai Prabhavishnavinama. Shukadeva Goswami lists many people who are considered untouchable, and then he says, but they can all become purified by practicing Krishna consciousness. So, um, if a, when a woman takes to Krishna consciousness, she becomes transcendental. Uh, she's called Takarani, as good as God, practically, is the title indication, and in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes. And when the Muslim uh, becomes engage in full Krishna consciousness. What to speak of Haridas Thakur, uh, fully surrendered to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he comes to the topmost position. Still, uh, the principle of a sannyasi uh, keeping distance from a woman is an eternal principle. And it's a regulative principle that is always there. And now uh, we see with Prataparudra, the king, uh, he was considered by Mahaprabhu at first to be untouchable, but because he was uh, deemed a pure devotee, indeed he was a pure devotee, and, and he was uh, supported by all the other pure devotees, there's a way in which Mahaprabhu accepted him and allowed him to come close, but he wouldn't do that uh, with a woman because that would violate the very principle of sannyas itself. I hope that helps. Yes, Gilmaj, that helps a lot. Okay. Uh, this is Sadhu Vrindavan Das. Sadhu Vrindavan. Is Vishaka there also? Um, she's in the kitchen cooking. She's cooking it up, huh? Okay, go ahead. Um, yesterday we read about how Haridas Thakur didn't want to go near the temple. Uh, uh, he, he, he didn't want to go, um, uh, he didn't want to go near the temple since he thought he was low caste. So, uh, the Lord wants everybody to, um, you know, uh, um, uh, do devotional service unto him, chant, um, go to the temple. So, why didn't Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, like, you know, Compel him to go to the temple, even because Haridas Thakur was like uh, a um, pure devotee, and so uh, he was qualified and competent to like go to the temple. So why did the Lord uh, um, compel him to? Well, I'll give you the answer that Madhavananda Prabhu gives every time we're in Jagannath Puri, and he gives a talk uh, when we're at the Jagannath Temple, and that is that the Lord always supports organized religion. And beyond that, there are more esoteric uh, devotees who understand the principles behind it. But externally, the members of the temple who don't want anybody but a Hindu to come in, they are um, aware of, of the process of religion only on a certain level, but the Lord respects that. And he didn't try to go against that system. And neither did Prabhupada, although he did, um, he did talk to the, um, <clears throat> the leaders of that temple to impel them that they should uh, not discriminate on a bodily level. But we can see from the example of Sanatana Goswami, Haridas Thakur, even Sanatan Goswami stayed away from the temple voluntarily, considering himself to, very, to be very fallen. Another question? Or comment, reflection. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Deva Vrata, Hare Krishna. I wanted to share a reflection from my experience in Mayapur. Okay. So um, this purport I actually remembered. When I was staying there, I got invited to this very unique Vaishnav gathering in Navadweep. And it was for the Babaji that actually was responsible for establishing the worship of the Dameshwar Mahaprabhu Didi. And it was his disappearance day. And I remember showing up and it 
as soon as I showed up, it was just like a very traditional Bengali kirtan. And then we showed up right when they were serving out prasadam, and they served out prasadam in like this this like very uh, unique order that was like meant to really bring out all the flavor of all the dishes. And then all the people that were there, they had these big Brahmin bellies, and they were laughing and singing the songs of Narottam Das Thakur the entire time. And I remember while we were there, I thought of this purport. So I was just uh, appreciating that it came up. Today. Yeah, thank you very much. It's an extremely important uh, activity for, for devotees. I could say that when I stay at Govardhan for one month during Kartik time, uh, all the devotees take prasadam together. We all sit in the hallway of the courtyard and brahmacharis uh, serve out the prasadam with, with great respect and devotion. And it's the most joyous time when we sing the prayer together for a long time. There's an etiquette that nobody starts taking prasadam uh, and, uh, until everybody has prasadam on their plate. So we feel that uh, togetherness. And I was recalling uh, when I was in Mayapur a few weeks ago that um, back in the old days, if I may, <laughs> in the 1970s, when we'd all go to Mayapur together to meet with Prabhupada, all the devotees in, in ISKCON who were there took prasadam in one room together. And of course, we, one room could accommodate the, uh, that many devotees devotees because there, there weren't that many at the time and we'd all sit together and, and uh, it was uh, a very meaningful and important time for us so it's it is as you're pointing out Deva Vrata Prabhu a very important aspect of Vaishnav culture to honor prasadam we don't just grab something and cram it in our mouth and you know eat when we're walking and so forth of course as we know um, as the, um, Sarbon Bhattacharya quoted from the Shastra when he took uh, Prasadam unceremoniously, when, he, when the Lord brought him Mahaprasadam early in the morning, uh, just after he'd been converted to a Vaishnav. Uh, generally, the Smartas would take great care to take their full bath before they eat anything, before they touch Mahaprasadam. But when, when Sarvabhama Bhattacharya became a Vaishnava, he understood that you take Prasadam immediately. Nadesha niyamastata nakala niyamastatra. It doesn't matter which country it comes from, where the place is, or what the time is, whether it's uh, stale or dried up, it doesn't matter. If you brought Mahaprasadam, you should take it immediately. And he he took that Mahaprasad. So we can take here, there, and everywhere, but it's with great respect and remembering that there's no difference between the Lord and Prasadam. Other reflections? Maharaj, there's a question. Yes? So Venudhari Gopal Prabhu is asking this question, or he has texted yes. that to me. So um, Hare Krishna Dandvat Pranams. And the question is, with respect to Haridas Thakur not entering the Jagannath Temple, it is said that if one feels unqualified to enter the temple, then one should not. If my spiritual master who might have a non-Hindu body is not able to enter, then how can I feel qualified to enter? Well, that's a, it's a nice... Thank you for asking that because I was waiting to ask that question. There you go, we got a two for here. Well, <laughs> it's a nice sentiment that uh, we know that um, when, um, yeah, if, if, if someone has that sentiment and follows that, Jitarashtra, um, his wife um, voluntarily uh, went blind because she was following her husband and this is a kind of a devotion and a, a, a disciple could have that for the spiritual master also. But it's, it depends. If the guru says, no, you should go in, then you should reconsider. But the sentiment is good. Okay, so... Um, but I, I, <laughs> I just wanted to add that I did not know that there were so many types of and flavors of prasadam prayers. Like there was one for khichdi, I didn't know that. <laughs> oh, you didn't know that? No, that there was oh, okay. for specific food items, I didn't know. 
Yeah, it's in the Gitavli. Let's see, Prasadam, 82. I'll, I'll just review that for you all. Because, uh, who you know, there's no better song, right? That brings, I know it brings happiness to my heart when I hear that song. <laughs> Prasad Sevaya. So during the honoring of spiritual food, six songs, the first song is to be sung before honoring the Lord's Prasad. That's Sharir Advid Jajal. The next two songs are to be sung while honoring the Lord's Prasad. That starts with Eka Dina Shanti Pure Prabhu Advitaragare. You all know that. And the third one we all know too, which is to be sung while honoring the Lord's Prasad. Shachir Angani Kabu Madhavendra Puri Pabu Prasadana Kodina Bujan. Now the fourth song is to be sung while eating the Lord's sweets. Sri Chaitanya Nityananda Sri Vasadi Bhakta Vrinda Gori Dasa Panda Tergade. The fifth song is to be sung while honoring the Lord's Kitri. Eka Dina Nila Chale Prasad Sevana Kale Madhu Prabhu Mahaprabhu Sri Shri Krishna Chaitanya. Then we've got the six songs to be sung while honoring the Lord's Bala Boga. And after that, that's it. Six songs he wrote. So all of them are to be relished. And there's some, as we already do before, and some during. So we can do that next time. When we all get together for Prasadam, which I hope is sometime very soon, uh, we can sing these songs. Thank you. Someone will bring out the sweets and we'll sing that too while we're having sweets. And if somebody brings Kitri, we'll sing the Kitri song. Okay? Yes, thank you very much. Haribo! We're thinking of Prasadam. Is there anything we can sing after? What? Is there anything we can sing after? Is there any prayer we say after we eat, honor the Prasadam? When you finish after, you, you, can, you can slap your armpits, say, very good, very good, just like... <laughs> Krishna's friends do. Okay, anyone else? Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, it's Namrata here. Hare Krishna, Namrata. Hare Krishna, I just wanted to quickly jump in because I might not be able to be on the call for very long. Okay. I'm just on the go and um, my phone battery is really low. So I wanted to share a reflection. Um, I really like um, really liked that Prabhupada emphasizes um, so one thing is that he talks about the loving relationship between Haridas Thakur and Lord Chaitanya. So he says, the servant pleasingly renders service unto the Lord, and the Lord also very pleasingly reciprocates. Um, and then he says, there is, however, a different difference in quantity. Um, the master is unlimited and the servant is limited. And then another purpose, he says, the relationship between master and servant continues due to their being unlimited and limited, respectively. So I really appreciate that Prabhupada makes it so clear um, and many multiple times in the purpose that there is a difference between the Lord and the and the devotee. Yes, yes, it, it is such an important, a succinct but very eloquent purport uh, showing the flaws in the Mayavad conception. And then there's a very sweet section which indicates, as you were saying, that there's a way in which the Lord tries to serve his devotees. Now, this is a, one of the secrets of devotional service, which is mentioned in the Bhagavatam. First of all, that the Lord becomes conquered by his devotees, love. This is mentioned by Brahma in his prayers when uh, just after Lord Krishna um, manifested the cows, the calves and the boys after Brahma had stolen them and then Brahma was defeated. Brahma began his prayers, and in one of them, he's, he, he says, uh, prayasam urapasya eva jivanti san mukaritam bhavadiyavartam stani stita shutigatam tanavan manobir ye prayaso jita jito pyasitaistri lokyam. And that is that uh, some, we should give up the propensity to try to understand God by our intellect, and we should simply surrender to the sound vibration, the transcendental sound vibration of the Bhagavatam and submissively hear. And from that process, then Ajita, 
Krishna, who's unconquerable, becomes jitta, or conquered by the love of his devotee. Now, when the Lord's conquered, he wants to serve his devotees, but the devotees won't take service. Therefore, when we serve devotees, we please the Lord in the best possible way. That's why when you become the servant of the servant of the servant, then you especially uh, are appreciated by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is why we call it Vaishnavism, because we worship Vaishnavas. So um, it's an it's a important point you brought up. Thank you very much. Thank Hare you Krishna. so much for doing this reading. Very happy to be able to join. Thank Jai. you. Hare Hare Hare. Okay, we'll take one more uh, reflection, and then we can go on with uh, finish the ch chapter. Reflection, reflection, or a question from yeah. anyone? I, I have a question. Um, yes. Uh, I was just wondering, Prabhu, that uh, there are devotees who do not mention that they don't belong to the Hindu uh, religion or believe in it, and they enter the Jagannath Puri temple. Is that okay? But you know what? That should be okay to enter, even. I mean, without without letting the officials know. What, that you're not a Hindu? No, no, not about me. I have a friend who just entered like that. I was just wondering if that's okay or not okay. I mean, because they want to see Jagannath and some people yeah, who... It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> it's fine. Just don't get caught. Um, <laughs> they're pretty severe about it. But the thing is, nobody knows what a Hindu is anyway. They have no idea, obviously. Yeah. That's why they just look and see if somebody looks like you know them and then if they do then they must be a hindu i mean i know japanese devotees who go in the temple i won't mention any names in case you know <laughs> but the fact is that you know it's okay um if you want a little trans little risk in your life Hare krishna yeah, thank you. so thank you very much uh let's keep going in this chapter because we're swimming in the nectar here then Swarup, Damodar Goswami, Damodar Pandit, and Jagadananda all began to distribute prasadam to the devotees with great pleasure. They ate all kinds of cakes and sweet rice, filling themselves up to their throats, and at intervals they vibrated the holy name of the Lord in great jubilation. Text 210. After everyone had finished his lunch and washed his mouth and hands, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally decorated everyone with flower garlands and sandalwood pulp. After thus accepting prasadam, they all went to take rest at their respective residences. And in the evening, they again came to meet Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. At this time, Ramananda Roy also came to meet Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and the Lord took the opportunity to introduce him to all the Vaishnavas. The great personality of Godhead, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then took all of them to the temple of Jagannath and began the congregational chanting of the holy name there. After seeing the dup arti of the Lord, they all began congregational chanting. Then the padicha, the superintendent of that temple, came and offered flower garlands and sandalwood pulp to everyone. Four parties were then distributed in four directions to perform sankirtan, and in the middle of them, the Lord himself known as the son of Mother Shachi, began to dance. In the four groups, there were eight madungas and 32 cymbals. Altogether, they began to vibrate the transcendental sound, and everyone said, very good, very good. When the tumultuous vibration of Sankirtan resounded, all good fortune immediately awakened, and the sound penetrated the whole universe through the 14 planetary systems. When the congregational chanting began, ecstatic love immediately overflooded everything and all the residents of Jagannath Puri came running. Everyone was astonished to see such a performance of Sankirtan and they all agreed that never before had Kirtan been so performed and ecstatic love of God so exhibited. At this time, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu circumambulated the temple of Jagannath and continuously danced about the whole area. As the circumambulation was performed, the four kirtan parties sang in front, of, in front and in the rear. 
When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu fell down to the ground, Sri Nityananda Roy Prabhu lifted him up. While Kirtan was going on, there was a transformation of ecstatic love and much tears, jubilation, trembling, perspiration, and deep resounding in the body of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Upon seeing this transformation, all the people present became very much astonished. The tears from the eyes of the Lord came out with great force, like water from a syringe. Indeed, all the people surrounded him. All the people who surrounded him were moistened by his tears. After circumambulating the temple, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu for some time remained at the rear of the temple and continued his Sankirtan. On all four sides, the four Sankirtan groups chanted very loudly, and in the middle, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu danced, jumping high. After dancing for a long time, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became still and ordered four great personalities to begin to dance. In one group, Nityananda Prabhu began to dance. And in another group, Advaita Charya began to dance. Vrakreshvara Pandit began to dance in another group. And in yet another group, Srivas Thakur began to dance. While this dancing was going on, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu watched them and performed a miracle. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu stood at the middle of the dancers, and all the dancers in all directions perceived that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was looking at them. Waiting to see the dancing of the four great personalities, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu exhibited this miracle of seeing everyone. Everyone who saw Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu could understand that he was performing a miracle, but they did not know how it was he could see on all four sides. In his own pastimes in Vrindavan, when Krishna used to eat on the bank of the Jamuna and sit in the center of his friends, every one of the coward boys would perceive that Krishna was looking at him. In the same way, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu observed the dancing, everyone saw that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was facing him. When someone came nearby while dancing, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would tightly embrace him. Upon seeing the great dancing, great love, and great Sankirtan, all the people of Jagannath Puri floated in an ecstatic ocean of love. Hearing the greatness of the Sankirtan, King Prachapuruja went up to the top of his palace and watched the performance with his personal associates. The king was very much astonished to see Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's kirtan, and the king's anxiety to meet him increased unlimitedly. After the sankirtan ended, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu watched the offering of flowers to the Lord Jagannath Didi. Then he then he and all the Vaishnavas returned to his residence. The superintendent of the temple then brought large quantities of prasadam, which Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally distributed to all the devotees. Finally, they all departed to rest in bed. In this way, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the son of Shachi Mata, performed his pastimes. As long as the devotees remained at Jagannath Puri with Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the pastime of Sankirtan was performed with great jubilation every day. In this way, I have explained the Lord's pastime of Sankirtan, and I bless everyone with this benediction. By listening to this description, one will surely become a servant of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Haribo! Praying at the lotus feet of Sri Rupa and Sri Raghunath, always desiring their mercy, I, Krishnadas, narrate Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, following in their footsteps. Thus end the Bhaktivedanta purports to Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, Madhya Lila, 11th chapter, describing the Veda Kirtan pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ki jai, Shri Panchatattva ki jai, Shri Jagannath Pudidam ki jai, Shri Haripatakur ki jai. Now we have the Madhya Lila Volume 3. I happen to have it in my possession. And just now only, I'm going to begin the reading 
so that um, just like a chain smoker always starts a new cigarette before <laughs> putting out the old one, uh, we'll keep going with the transcendental migration. Madhya Leela chapter 12. Shri Gudicha Mandiram Atma Vrindai Samara Jayan Shalanta Sagora Swachitta Vach Chittalam Ujvalam Cha Krishna Pavesh Chao Payikam Chakara Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu washed and cleansed the Gunicha temple with his devotees and associates. In this way, he made it as cool and bright as his own heart. And thus he made the temple a befitting place for Lord Sri Krishna to sit. Jai Jai Gora Chandra Jaya Nityananda Jai Dwaita Chandra Jai Gora Bhaktivrinda All glories to Gora Chandra, all glories to Nityananda. All glories to Advaita Chandra and all glories to the devotees of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. All glories to the devotees of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, headed by Srivast Thakur. I beg their power so that I can properly describe Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu returned from his South Indian tour, Maharaj Prataparudra, the king of Orissa, became very anxious to meet him. The king sent a letter from his capital, Katak to Sarvabhama Bhattacharya, entreating him to ob obtain the Lord's permission so that he could go and see him. Replying to the king's letter, the Bhattacharya wrote that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had not given his permission. After this, the king wrote him another letter. In this letter, the king requested Sarvabhama Bhattacharya, please appeal to all the devotees associated with Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and submit this petition to them on my behalf. If all the devotees associated with the Lord are favorably disposed toward me, they can submit my petition at the lotus feet of the Lord. By the mercy of all the devotees, one can attain the shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord. Without his mercy, my kingdom does not appeal to me. If Gora Hari Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will not show mercy to me. I shall give up my kingdom, become a mendicant, and beg from door to door. When the Bhattacharya received this letter, he became very anxious. He then took the letter and went to the devotees of the Lord. Sarvabhama Bhattacharya met with all the devotees and described the king's wishes. Then he presented the letter to all of them for inspection. Upon... <laughs> This is a very, um, it's, a, it's a beautiful scene. The king writing his intentions and then it being delivered by Sarvabhama Bhattacharya. And just in this last verse, Sabare, everyone, Milia, meeting Kahila, said, Raja Vivarana, Vivarana, description of the king's desire, Raja Vivarana. So this is uh, something we talked about previously, this vivarana, this desire is the key component, the active ingredient to making advancement in devotional service. If that's there, there can be no impediment. Impediments uh, cannot stand up to the intensive desire of the devotee to advance in devotional service. It's like Dhruva Maharaj, even though he was just a little boy, how could he possibly go off to the forest and be successful in something he had never done before? It was because he was so intensely desirous of pleasing, uh, of, of attaining what he wanted from the Lord, that, that he was able to get a spiritual master that helped him. So everything can be supplied and is supplied to those who have this intensity of purpose in devotional service. And the Bhagavatam indicates that even if it's not quite pure in the beginning, Akama sarva kama va moksha kama udaradi tivrena bhakti yogena yajeta purusham param. If you have all desires, or if you have desire for liberation, or even no material desires, you should still approach the Lord. Tivrena means with very intense a uh, purpose uh, to to fulfill the Lord's lotus feet. So that's the beauty of approaching the Lord. 
upon reading the letter, everyone, oh, and they didn't, uh, Raja Divarana, description of the king's desire, Piche, later, She Patri, that letter, Sapare, unto everyone, Karaila, the Rashana, he showed it. Darashana. Sarvabhambacharya met with all the devotees and described the king's wishes. Raj Bivarana. Then he presented the letter to all of them for inspection. So that I really like that. They all took a look at it. What, what is this king? What, is he, what did he write? Upon reading the letter, everyone was astonished to see that King Prataparudra had so much devotion for the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And you can imagine what the quality of a letter at that time was. I mean, it's not just a thing you pull out a ballpoint pen and you say, I'm going to write a letter now. It's an involved process to actually make an imprint on a leaf and then have it uh, delivered. It's uh, not so easy. It inquires great intentionality. The devotees gave their opinion and said, the Lord will never meet the king. And if we requested him to do so, the Lord would surely feel very unhappy. Sarvabhama Bhattacharya then said, we shall, go, we shall go once again to the Lord, but we shall not request him to meet the king. Rather, we shall simply describe the good behavior of the king. Having thus reached a decision, they all went to the place of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. There, although ready to speak, they could not even utter a word. After they arrived at Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's place, the Lord, seeing them, said, What have you all come here to say? I see that you want to say something, but you do not speak. What is the reason? Nityananda Prabhu then said, We want to tell you something, although we cannot say without speaking. We are still very much afraid to speak. We want to submit before you something that may or may not be befitting. The matter is this, unless he sees you, the king of Arissa will become a mendicant. Nityananda Prabhu continued, the king has decided to become a mendicant and accept the sign of a mendicant by wearing an ivory earring. He does not want to enjoy his kingdom without seeing the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Purport, in India, there is still a class of professional mendicants who are very much like the gypsies of Western countries. They know some magical art and mystical processes, and their business is to beg from door to door, sometimes pleading and sometimes threatening. Such mendicants are sometimes called yogis and sometimes kanapata yogis. The word kanapata refers to one who has put a hole in his ear to wear an earring made of ivory. Maharaj Prataparuja was so depressed by not getting to see Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that he decided to become such a yogi. Ordinary men think that a yogi must have an ivory earring in his ear, but this is not the sign of a real yogi. Maharaj Prataparuja also thought that to become a mendicant yogi, one must wear such an earring. And we'll uh, leave it there for tonight with any last uh, questions or reflections. Now, Shredder, can you see what's going on on Facebook? Because I sure can't. I've, although I have it open, it's not apparent to me uh, who's leaving any uh, reflections or questions. Although I see there's 26 comments, I yeah. don't see how to open them. Yeah, sure, Maharaj. Yeah. So I do, uh, there are comments, but I didn't see many questions uh, before, the la before this session. Let me go back in and see if there are any new questions there. Uh, mostly people are sending you their greetings. Okay, my greetings back. Yeah, but, but let me just yeah. look at that. Anyone else here on Zoom that wants to make a reflection or a question? Well, Prabhu, so um, we were, um, the Sadhana and us again, so we were reading the, um, we were reading a verse where I, I think it said Sri Chaitanya, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, um, while he was doing Sangirtan, uh, tears um, came out like um, like a syringe, or um, I don't exactly that verse but it said that um it moist it um the tears moistened all the devotees and moisten meaning that it like um i didn't get the word uh, uh i didn't get the moisten like 
did it like make them wet? I don't get it. I didn't get it. Yeah, that's what it meant. Yeah. It meant oh. There was so much, uh, so many tears coming out so profusely that the audience became moist and wet. Yes. Thank you. Hare Krishna Prabhu. This is Radha Vallabh Das. Radha Vallabh Das here. Radha Vallabh Prabhu. Hare Vallabh. I was a uh, few days back, I was uh, sharing with uh, Hansa Priya and few devotees that Radhanath Swami Maharaj was uh, with the king of Jagannath Puri, current, recent Jagannath Puri mm. king, few years back. And there was a discussion about allowing ISKCON devotees into Jagannath temple. Mm -hmm. So I, I was happened to be there. And uh, the Maharaj argued that uh, how ISKCON devotees take lifelong vows of. Uh, you know, all these nice principles for regulative principles. And they don't eat meat, they don't take liquors, they don't gamble, they don't, you know, no intoxication or illicit sex. But uh, uh, they are not allowed to enter. Whereas there may be some people in the name of Hindu, they may be eating meat, they may be prostitutes, they're allowed to enter. Maharaj are good like that with the king. The current king is an advocate, he's a lawyer. So he was speaking many things. Uh, then finally he admitted that uh, Iskand devotees should be allowed. And he was telling how his father allowed some uh, Western uh, you know, yoga students to the Puri temple. But currently he doesn't have the power of attorney to allow anybody to the temple. Yeah. But, he, but he says there are some 25 committees within the Jagannath Puri temple who handles all the administrative affairs. And all these 25 committees are more maybe they come together and has to sanction it, then only it can happen. Then he requested ISKCON presence in Puri is not so strong and not visible so much in their service to Jagannath Puri. So if ISKCON, ISKCON as a body contributes nicely in Jagannath Puri and it is visible to the, all the committees, then they may say, yes, uh, we should allow them to come inside. So that was something I wanted to update to all devotees. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Thank you for giving an eyewitness account of that very important discussion. It's like revealed scripture. <laughs> I just, yes. Hare Krishna Prabhupada. This is SKP here, Bangalore. Oh, SKP. Hare Krishna. Oh, Prabhu, just thank you, Prabhu. You reminded the Jagannath Puri while I, I really liked the past time you mentioned. We were there. We were just there, right? Because uh, when you hear about it, you just go there, don't you? Yes, Prabhu. Yes. That's yeah. so nice. Yes. Um, I think every year for uh, Jagannath comes out for Radhayatra, right, Prabhu? So devotees who cannot take darshan, the reason he's coming out is we can all take darshan of him. So yeah. that's a, a reflection I thought of sharing. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. One year, I went there uh, about two weeks before the Rathiatra had stayed all the way through to the return Rathiatra. Oh, Jai. Yeah, I was with the Godbrother. Boy, it was really hot. <laughs> I've never been in such a hot place. By the time you could see the sun uh, rising, I mean, not even, it hadn't even come up yet. If you could just see the red on the horizon, it was too hot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> be out. You know, we took the seven, eight showers a day. We were staying up on the roof somewhere in these wow. little places. But um, there were just two of us, and all we had were car tolls. So when we went down for the Rathiatra, we'd start a kirtan. And when the Rathiatra start, a cart would stop, just the two of us doing kirtan together with, with car tolls, a big crowd would come around. And everyone would really get into it, and they'd start dancing and everything. We had no speakers, anything. And then uh, after a while, when the cart would move again, the crowd would break up again. And then, you know, half an hour later, we'd all reconvene with different people, but a few people followed us. And it was uh, a beautiful scene. When we saw the, the Lord getting on his cart, we were looking out into the audience from up on that uh, balcony. Yes. We got a seat up there. Yeah. And we could see that, um, I mean, it was just a million people or more in one place, but within the, the huge crowd, you could see everyone had their individual identities. They, they had signs and they had certain kinds of dress and they were dancing. So you saw this uh, chinta beta beta, they were one, but had the individuality at the same time. And such an overwhelmingly 
powerful experience. I think you go there every year, right? Yeah, uh, yes, Prabhu. Yeah, yeah. It, it's the, every year it's a unique experience, Prabhu. When we go there, that the, the, they have a lot of vow, Prabhu. The devotees there, you know. So yeah. They yeah. take the Tulasi Maharaj yeah. on their head, and you know, in front they're dancing on the street. It's so enlivening, Prabhu. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, the local residents, even um, and when. Uh, Pundarik Vidyadidi, during Odana Shasti, uh, he went to observe the ceremony where they, they offer new cloth to the Lord, but they offered new cloth that's unwashed and it's still starched. And he became a little indignant and he was thinking, why do they offer such things to the Lord? Why, why don't they offer washed cloth to the Lord? And that night, in a dream, Lord Jagannath and Baladev came and, and severely chastised him and said, why are you criticizing our servants? This is a local custom. Why are you getting involved? <laughs> and he began, they began slapping his cheeks, so much so that the next day he had these welts on his, on his cheeks. And when some of the devotees, the intimate devotees, came to know what had happened, they were various, uh, they had glorified Pundarik so much. But the point was that sometimes we find that in these places, the, the local uh, <clears throat> pujaris, they have, you know, they have their own ceremonies and they have their own ways and they do stuff that we can't understand. Yes, it doesn't mean that the Lord doesn't like it. Yes, it's kind of it doesn't mean that. You know, we can't come in and say, uh, you yes. know, we're better or anything like that. We right. go to the Dom with this mood that, if we can, you know, be in the crowd playing cartels or watch it, you know, and pick up just a molecule of the bob that they have, then that's to our uh, our, our great credit. Yeah, when I went last time, Prabhuji, the, the, from the Balram cart, the panda, I know him. So he gave him, a, a, from his Jagannath, Balram's plate, a, I think it's a sweet mar, uh, Prabhuji. So he asked me to eat immediately. You should eat now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, we cannot comment anything. It's, it's really great bow they have. Yeah. Like it, so. Thank you, Prabhu. Yeah, fantastic. And it reminded me too, when we go there on Yatra and we do the book distribution right in front of the temple, there's nothing like it. I mean, the kirtan gets going, people come around and watch, and just uh, we distribute thousands of books there. Wow. It's really, really ecstatic. Okay. Hare Anybody Hare else? Krishna, yes. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. It's Gopal Champu. Gopal Champu, you're up late. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, we're just making our way down a couple more. Oh, you're still in the car. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, just uh, in regards to the pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, you know, um, um, Ramesh or Prabhu had mentioned to us that um, Prabhupada told him these pastimes were meant for everybody. As far as when they were when they were printed in books, and um, I was just wondering when the new people would say they may hear these descriptions, how can we, you know, uh, explain it to them? Uh, how to explain the uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes to them? Like if we're distributing Chaitanya Charitamrita and things like that. Gopal. Yes. Yes. You mean, should we distribute Chaitanya Charitamrita? And then if so, will they be able to understand it? Right. That's my question. Yeah, yeah. It's a good question. Well, you know, with any of the literatures, it's helpful if we have a follow-up for them, especially with Chaitanya Charitamrita. And, um, and then, of course, there's the TLC. Uh, and in the TLC, Prabhupada obviously has his preface and introduction. And then, uh, just like with the Krishna book, he's uh, holding our hand all the way through it to explain everything so as as a summary so that's helpful also when they get Chaitanya Charitamrita if they can also get that but Prabhupada went to so much care you'll notice even in the introduction to the Chaitanya Charitamrita he gives a whole history of uh, what's going on and so forth and um, yeah so um, I mean my immediate response is that uh, just as Prabhupada tried to spoon feed us these things, we should also hopefully do the same for others. And it's nice if somebody gets a Chaitanya Charter Media, it's nice if we could also include a TLC 
and maybe some other books too to help the, help them get started. What to speak of having some kind of follow up so that they can um, come to uh, an associate, come to a group of devotees and and discuss it and get more out of it. But that doesn't mean that we should slow down distributing them because uh, Prabhupada did indicate that they were for mass distribution. Is that what you said, Ramaswar said? Yes, yeah. So, so he had asked Prabhupada, you know, should we just be picking these more devotees or we get everybody? And Prabhupada said, yes, every single person. I mean, it was very rare that Prabhupada didn't say that. I know Brahma Samhita was not like a huge mass distribution book, but it, practically everything else Prabhupada had us print huge print runs. So, yeah, safe journey. You're almost there. Hare Krishna. Well, thank you, dear devotees, for joining on Facebook and also here on Zoom and wherever else you may be joining from. I know we're on multiple channels at the same time. But um, Krishna willing, we'll keep the vibration going here as long as the infrastructure holds up. And um, I'm going to read you one last uh, ne uh, piece of nectar here. Piece of nectar? Drop of nectar? A couple of things. Um, here we have from uh, the writings of Bhakti Minut Thakur. One moment. Huh. Okay. Apparently it's gone away. I'll read you something else. This is from, um, oh no, I know where it is. Uh, Here you go. Uh, a god brother called me up today. For some reason, everyone's calling me now. <laughs> I guess because everyone's home. And uh, he read me this over the phone. It's a song by Bhakti Mino Thakur called Heno Dusta Karmanai. And he writes, Oh, my dear Lord Hari. There are not sinful activities which I have not performed thousands upon thousands of times. And by the fruits of all these sinful actions, I have become robbed of all strength, being helplessly taken for an excruciatingly painful ride on the machine of this material world. Seeing no other hope for deliverance in sight, I'm now continuously crying before you, my Lord. Please punish your insignificant servant as you see befitting for you are my Lord and ruling master. Whatever difficulty my destiny prescribes for me, I will gladly undergo. But I have just one appeal to make to you. My dear Lord, no matter what condition I must undergo, please never give me up, for you are the only treasure of Bhakti Vinod's life. Hare Krishna. Did you like it? Yes. yes my Okay, and this is a prayer that I've been passing on to many devotees because people all over the world, devotees are all over the world are feeling that, um, as Bhakti Vinod Thakur says, they're getting uh, taken for an excruciatingly painful ride on the machine of this material world. So here's a prayer. It's not really a laughing matter, but it's just that uh, the way Bhakti Vinod Thakur puts it. Um, this is from Lord Krishna. I read it the other night, but it's it's one to, I think that is very cathartic. If you'll take this prayer out of the Bhagavatam at eleven twenty seven forty six, this is the section where Lord Lord Krishna is teaching Uddhava how to do deity worship, and he says, placing his head at the at the feet of the deity. He, the Pujari, should then stand with folded hands before the Lord and pray, O oh my Lord, please protect me, who am surrendered unto you. I am most fearful of this ocean of material existence, standing as I am in the mouth of death. So we can remember Bhakti Mano Thakur, and we can remember all the associates of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and how kind Lord Krishna is to us, even though. We're on an excruciating ride here on this material, on the machine of the material world. We don't have anything to worry about because we're under the shelter of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and all the great Vaishnavas. 
And so the, the main point is to do, do whatever you have to do to stay safe and healthy and keep the transcendental vibration going. And um, very soon, uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will bestow his full mercy on us. And in other news, uh, it's starting. Devotees are starting to um, reach out over the internet and are actually having success in uh, distributing uh, books on the internet. I spoke with Gopal Champu Prabhu today and the inimitable uh, Yuga Dharma Ashram devotees didn't waste any time. As soon as they were not able to distribute books on the street, they started going on the internet and they distributed a huge quantity of books over the last few days. I also have been in uh, conference calls over the last couple of days with um, devotees from all over the world and we're putting together a manifesto for how to um, approach the internet. There's so many good ideas and um, we're looking forward to this new uh, frontier which I personally believe is uh, being arranged by Lord Chaitanya. The reason he shut the water off everywhere else in the world <laughs> is so we could take a look at the internet and really open up this channel, which I believe will be 10, 20, 50, 100 times bigger than we're doing now. So let's all go for it. Thank you very much, everybody. Gaur Premanande, Hari Bol. Everyone, please uh, unmute and say yes, Hari Krishna. We will see you again soon, Krishna willing. Hare Krishna. Nachari Armarman, Nachari Armarman, Nachari Armarman, Nachari Armarman, hey, Nachari Armarman, Nachari Armarman. Not to the arm, my man, not to the arm, my man.